Hello and welcome to The Bridge Coaching. I am coming to you with this message just as we were about to round off 2021 as late December and I hope that you've had a little bit of a break. Uh, you might be catching this video early in 2022 which is also totally fine um, but I wanted to share this um, method with you if you will to help you answer this question which I've had many many times which is what are your best tips to set professional goals and make sure they happen. Now the question has been worded a little bit differently but I get this question a lot and the long answer is that my whole world of coaching and supporting people through career change is a lot about setting meaningful and achievable goals that stretch them to um, achieve different things in their career. So going in the direction that they want and unpacking what that looks like, uh, keeping them accountable in the process, etc. But um, if you haven't worked with a coach or you're not ready to work with a coach quite yet, I wanted to share these tips with you anyway because it can be incredibly helpful in looking at the year that was and looking ahead at the year you want to create. So firstly, let's talk about the wording. So some people that I work with have a massive issue with the word goals. So sometimes what I will encourage people to do is focus on the word intentions instead. Either way, it doesn't matter if you call it a goal or an intention or a New Year's resolution or whatever language works for you. You've got to want to make it happen. If you don't want it, I mean, I could set a goal to become the best tennis player in the world. But if I'm not particularly interested in tennis, which I'm not, um, that's just never going to happen. So you need to set yourself up for a goal or have a clear intention of something that matters to you. That's the baseline underneath it all. If you don't really want to or care about getting healthier, then don't set fitness and exercise goals. Because if you can't work out within yourself why you want that, then it's not going to happen. Yes, you can get a PT who's going to tell you what to do, etc. And much like with career coaching, you can get a coach. But if you don't genuinely want to change, then it's not going to change. And I know that might sound harsh, but that's maybe some reflection you can do with yourself to choose the very first point, which is set a clear intention. So an intention, I often do this at the end of a year for the year to come. So I set a theme or a keyword, if you will, or a key phrase every single year. I've been doing this for five or six years now. A few of my key things have included finance. So a whole year I focus a lot on my financial well-being, if you will, um, and learned a lot about saving and organizing my money and things like that, which was really, really helpful. Um, the year that just just gone 2021 my keyword or my key theme was self-love which was a challenge at times because lockdowns here in Melbourne Australia where, I, where I'm based were really really difficult and there were times where I was not feeling my best I'll be very open and honest with that and there might be a few of you watching who also did not have a great time because of COVID or other circumstances around you but nevertheless, it's when you have a keyword or a key theme you come back to, you actually find ways unconsciously to continue to move in that direction. So for me, and I'm happy to publicly share this, my goal or my theme for 2022 is health and well-being. And I mean health and well-being in a physical and emotional way for myself, my business, my clients, and that includes a lot of other things too, obviously. So I can't just have an intention. I need to kind of make it as specific as possible and have some activities included in that. But it's a really cool thing that you can do. You can set a really big top line word for your year. And then you can also set a specific intention or a specific goal. So for example, if my keyword for the whole year is health and well-being, I might set myself a goal that I am going to by the end of January of 2022, I want to have exercised X many times or four out of five days a week, I leave work at X o'clock to make time for, you know, social time or well-being time that is important to me. So set yourself a really clear intention in your mind's eye and ideally write it down as well if you can. If you have a particular professional goal in mind, do the same thing. If you want to be in a particular role or have left the role you're currently in by a certain date, then set that intention which segues into the next one which is make it time bound. 
You've probably heard about SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T. If not, you can Google SMART goals. There's lots of great articles on them. But the T in SMART goals stands for timed, meaning if we don't set a time when that intention is going to be happening by or when that goal is going to be partly or fully achieved by, then we're not going to make it happen. So for example, if my goal was the health and well-being balance with my work, I want to make sure that every month or the end of every month, I check in how I'm tracking with leaving work on time and making time for exercise, social stuff and other things that is going to help my health and well-being. So that is an example, but there are endless examples of it. But make sure that it's time bound, put it down in a calendar somewhere. It's not that difficult these days. We have a lot of technological tools to make it happen. The third one is a bit of a long shot for some of you who might struggle with this, but write it down as if it's already happened. So for example, if my intention for 2022 is health and well-being in my life and in my business and in my work, um, and I'm doing that monthly sort of check-in, maybe I write down a bit of a um, vision for myself. So I could say something like, it's the 30th of June, 2022. And for the past six months, I have been leaving work at X o'clock every day, making sure that at least X days a week I was do I have been doing, so as if it's already happened, I have been doing half an hour of exercise five days a week, and I've really been enjoying it, etc., etc. And then you write that down as if it's already happened, because what you're doing is you're training your brain that it's not that difficult, and you're kind of not tricking it, but you're helping it along to start taking the action that you know that you need to take to achieve that thing that you wanted in the first place, which is point number one. Number four, tell someone about it. The more people we tell about stuff, the more accountable it will be. Now, the caveat here is obviously tell people that you care about and that care about you. You don't want people who are going to beat you up. You want people who hold you accountable in a healthy and helpful way, which is the key word here, healthy and helpful. So tell someone else about it, make a declaration about it, maybe set a joint goal or a joint intention with someone else who's also looking to be healthier or leave work on time or take a certain training or whatever that might be. And finally, take the first action. So whether you take the action itself or schedule the first action to happen, the very first step is really, really important. Yes, naturally, you do need to stick, keep moving after that as well. But if we take the health and well-being thing, for example, signing up to the gym is a really important first action. And obviously, after that, you want to keep going to the gym every couple of days because otherwise you're not going to build any muscle. Your professional world is the same. So if you, if the first action is to research training courses in X field and then the next step is going to be to book in for the training course that you nominated. So that's essentially it. That's how you set professional goals and make sure that they happen. This is a shortened version. And if you are struggling a little bit with this, I do have some great offers that are about to expire. So at the end of the 31st of December, um, make sure that you sign up now, even if you don't want to take action until in the new year, or if you're watching this in the new year, I'm sorry you've missed out because this was only available to the 31st of December. But if you're watching this before the end of the year, make sure to hop, hop on the link below. I will also link this webpage uh, below this video so that you can have a look at the different offers. I have a lot of great things that are happening in the new year. And even if you miss these particular offers, I do encourage you to hop over to the bridgecoaching.com.au forward slash contact and you can get in touch for a free call with me and we can have a chat about the different things that I've got to offer and what might help you in your career if that's what you need right now. As always, if you found this video useful, forward this email or, or click that little share button on the, on the link and pass it on to someone in your world who might need a little bit of help with this right now. And whether you have a question or you want to share something else, send in your question or your comments to hello at thebridgecoaching.com.au. I really love hearing from you guys and shaping these videos to be as helpful as possible for you. I'm wishing you a fabulous end to 2021. It's been big. It's been strange. It's been difficult for many of us. Let's all hope that 2022 is a little bit better. And remember that you can, within the realms of what you can influence, shape the career that you really want and deserve. All the best. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.